still ready for that. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time or are visiting uh, live uh, on Facebook Live or watching our videos, welcome. I'm uh, Reverend Paul Barton, the pastor here at Casa de uh, One of the things that we have just uh, enacted, something new, is that if you're with us on Facebook Live, you can now post messages. So feel free to post a message on Facebook Live. Si estás en nosotros, usando Facebook Live, puedes poner texto en Facebook Live con nosotros. Uh, today we are celebrating the second Sunday in Advent, and uh, we are also celebrating Holy Communion uh, this first day of the month. And as we read our scripture passages today, uh, both in the Old Testament and in the in the Gospel, I want you to be thinking about the word and the theme of preparation, because preparation is the theme of the readings and the and the sermon for today. Uh, hoy estamos celebrando uh, la comunión porque es el primer domingo en el mes y también este es el segundo domingo de la estación de Adviento. Y el tema de las escrituras de hoy uh, es la preparación. Entonces, a favor de pensar de cómo Dios prepara uh, al mundo para la llegada de Jesús y cómo también nosotros preparamos para Jesús. Now let's uh, enjoy and listen to the prelude by Rai. Join me in the opening prayer. Favor de ponerse de pie para juntarse en la oración. La apertura. You may read in Spanish or English. Vamos a uh, leer juntos en español e inglés. Podemos. Apenas podemos creerlo, Señor. La temporada de Adviento está sobre nosotros. Normalmente traducimos eso en la temporada de compras, en preparación para el gran día. Pero cuando colocamos nuestra, nuestra esperanza en el monopel, en motorios, cinta y cajas, nos olvidamos del regalo más glorioso de todos, el don del amor absoluto de Dios. Abre nuestros ojos, nuestros corazones, nuestros espíritus hoy, para contemplar el amor misericordioso de Dios, con nosotros en el cumplimiento de todas las promesas de Dios. Pedimos esto en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Thank you. 
may be seated. Good morning. Today's children's sermon is based on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And today I'm going to tell you a story about the King's Highway. Actually, I'm going to tell you several stories about King's Highways. First of all, there was a real King's Highway in Texas and Louisiana when those areas that are now those states were part of the Kingdom of Spain. The Spanish King had this highway built so that supplies could be sent out to the territories and money could be sent back to the Spanish Crown. And behind me is the Camino Real or King's Highway. Doesn't look like much today, but 250 years ago, this was a super highway. It was really well built and well traveled. And roads don't build themselves, people build them. And roads have to go over rivers and mountains and through valleys. And the very best roads are straight. And that's a lot of work. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in a country that we've forgotten its name, there lived a king. And the king had built the very best road that he could because he was a good king and he wanted what was best for his people. But the king was getting old and he had no children. So he decided to have a contest to see who would be his heir and become the king after him. He announced the person that best traveled his road would win and be the new king. But the king had a big pile of rocks poured over the road, blocking it at one point. So a rich man started down the road, and when he reached the pile of rocks, he had his servants make a path around it. And a mighty warrior also traveled down the road, and when he reached the rocks, he climbed right over the pile. But a young shepherd boy also started down the road. But when he reached the pile of rocks, he thought about how hard those rocks must make travel for all the people, and he cleared the road. And underneath the pile of rocks, he found a very valuable ring, the king's ring. So this boy finished his journey, and he returned the ring to the king. And the king knew then that he had found his heir, and he crowned the shepherd boy. But the rich man and the warrior both cried out, You can't crown him. He's only a peasant. He's not worthy. But the king said, Of all the contestants for the crown, this boy was the only one who cared for the people of my kingdom as much as I do, and he will be my heir. In today's scripture, John the Baptist also talks about preparing a pathway for the Lord. And John said, every valley must be filled in, every hill and mountain leveled off, the winding roads must be made straight, and the rough paths made smooth, and the whole human race will see God's salvation. When Jesus came to earth, he was that salvation, and he gave us a straight road, a way for all of us to come to God. But, you know, sometimes our roads are curvy, are they steep, are they hilly, and sometimes we hit unexpected detours, obstacles that can block our road to God. And these obstacles aren't piles of rock. Instead, they're the things that hold us back. This could be the pain of a loss, a grudge against someone that we can't let go, uh, our own bad actions, or other things that distract us from the road. Now, how do we get rid of these obstacles and make our road straight? We can pray, we can learn about God in Sunday school, and we can read the Bible. All these things will help us get back on the road to finding God. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending John the Baptist to prepare the way to Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus to show us the road to your kingdom. And thank you for your loving kindness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
The Evan Candle, Luke 2, 8 through 11. And there were shepherds living out in the fields near them, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. En esa misma región había unos pastores que pasaban la noche en el campo. Uh, tornándose para cuidar sus rebaños. Sucedió que un ángel del Señor se les apareció. La gloria del Señor los envió en su luz. Y se, iba, y se llenaron de temor. Pero el ángel les dijo, no tengan miedo. Miren que les traigo buenas nuevas noticias que serán motivo de mucha alegría para todo el pueblo. Hoy les ha nacido en la ciudad de David un Salvador, que es Cristo el Señor. <coughs> Today, we remember the shepherds, workers for the common good, steadfast watchmen, isolated and alone, far from the warmth of home, during doing a job no one wants. And yet, God saw them, God valued them, and God declared the greatest news of all to them. On the second Sunday in Advent, we light the second candle as a symbol of a shepherd, agents of gospel, and redeemers of the world. Hoy recordamos los pastores, trabajadores del buen común. Se le, se le, se, se le adora firmes, ansiados de, sal, de sol y solo lejos del calvo de hogar, haciendo el trabajo que nadie quiere. Y sin embargo, Dios les dio, Dios les los valoró y Dios declaró la mejor noticia de todos los, de todos, solo para ellos. Y este segundo domingo de Advento, encendemos, encendemos la segunda vela como símbolo de los pastores, agentes del Evangelio y redentores del mundo.
Testament reading comes from Malachi, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The Lord Almighty answered, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he appears? He will be like a strong soap, like, a, like fire that refines metal. He will come to judge like the one who refines and purifies silver. As a metal worker refines silver and gold. So the Lord's messenger will purify the priests so that they will bring to the Lord the right kind of offerings. Then the offerings which the people of Judah and Jerusalem bring to the Lord will be pleasing to him as they used to be in the past. The word of God for the people of God. La lectura del Antiguo Testamento será Malaquías, capítulo 3, versículos del 1 a, al 4. El Señor Todopoderoso responde, yo estoy por enviar a mi mensajero para que prepare el camino delante de mí. De pronto vendrá a su templo el Señor quien a ustedes buscan. Vendrá el mensajero del pacto en quien ustedes se complacen. Pero ¿quién podrá soportar el día de su venida? ¿Quién podrá mantenerse en pie cuando Él aparezca? Porque será como fuego de fundidor o lejía de lavandero. Se sentará como fundidor y purificador de plata. Purificará a los levitas y los refinará como se refine el oro y la plata. Entonces traerán al Señor ofrendas conforme a la justicia. Y las ofrendas de Judá y Jerusalén serán aceptables al Señor. Como en tiempos antiguos, como en años pasados. Palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. Al uh, empezar a pensar de, de la ofrenda para hoy, vamos a recordar también el mensaje del de, de, uh, sermón infantil, porque el... Uh, la ofrenda que, que este pastor, el niño pastor dio fue la ofrenda de generosidad, la ofrenda de consideración a los otros. So vamos a recordar todos los tipos de ofrendas que damos a Dios, no solamente uh, de dinero, pero de nuestra actitud y de nuestro comportamiento. Uh, también, uh, I was in English, sometimes I have to remember to say English and Spanish. Is this not working? Okay, let's, excuse me. I apologize for that. There you go. Uh, so I was saying uh, that the offering, as we give our offering, let's remember the, uh, the children's sermon, which the little shepherd boy gave his offering. And his offering was consideration for others so, and compassion for other people who are walking along the, the road from the path. Uh, and so our offerings that we can give are not only by money, but also in our attitudes and in our behaviors as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also for those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live or on videos, you may also uh, give your offering using our uh, website, uh, a web page that we have on our website for Casa de Nuevo Dallas. And our anthem this morning is Come O Redeemer Come by Fernando Ortega. <laughs>
Sí. Otros ellos, ¿no? Sí. Ayudar a estar pidiendo que oremos por las personas que, que están uh, uh, luchando contra uh, el cáncer. Uh, Magdalena is asking we pray for all those who are struggling with cancer. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dios es misericordia, escucha nuestra oración. Yes, Isabel. Yes, you'd like for us to pray for my wife who's here? We certainly will. We raise up uh, our prayers for my wife who's with us. Uh, and so grateful, glad you can be with us, my wife. God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. We want to remember Susan Lake, who is not with us today because she's sick at home uh, with uh, infection, uh, sinus infection. So, oremos por Susan Lake que está enferma con una infección sinusitis. God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Dios en su misericordia, escucha nuestra oración. Sandra is asking that we pray for the immigrant community, that uh, they will receive that which they need as well. For uh, la comunidad inmigrante, uh, Dios en su misericordia, escucha nuestra oración. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Sherry. Sure is asking that we pray for the victims of uh, shootings in uh, Michigan uh, that occurred this last week and also in Mesquite. Uh, God, in your prayer, hear our, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dios en su misericordia, escucha nuestra oración. Very well, let us continue in prayer if you will join me. Gracious God, you sent your Holy Spirit to help us to pray. And we remember, even in Romans 8, where it says the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches the hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because he pleads for the saints. So we ask, O oh Holy Spirit, that you will plead for us, that you will reach the innermost of our being so that we may know that which we need to pray for and that we may trust completely in you. Recordamos, oh Dios, el pasaje de Romanos 8 cuando dice, el Espíritu mismo intercede por nosotros con gemidos indecibles. Y aquel que escudrina los corazones sabe cuál es el sentir del Espíritu, porque Él intercede por los santos conforme a la voluntad de Dios. Gracias, oh Espíritu Santo, por interceder por nosotros. Gracias por hacernos más conscientes de la voluntad de Dios. Y sabemos que es tu voluntad que nosotros juntemos regularmente y oramos los unos por los otros. Y oramos por todas las personas mencionadas que están luchando con la enfermedad, por cualquier tipo. Oramos por los que no pueden estar con nosotros por, porque están en la casa y no pueden salir. Oramos, oh Dios, por los que sufren de otras maneras, además de enfermedad por los sin techo, por los sin comida, por los que no reciban, que no reciben sus necesidades. Lord, we pray for, not only for the, our church members here, for those who cannot be with us because of illness or because of other physical ailments. We lift them up to you as well, O oh God, but we also pray for those in our community. We pray for those who are homeless during this time. And we pray for those who are, are hungry, who are food insecure, do not know if they will have enough to eat. We pray, O oh Lord, for the victims of shootings, recent shootings, especially in Michigan and Mesquite. And we ask, 
that you will heal our nation, that you will be with those persons who have the illness of their mental illness that leads them to, to want to kill other people. We ask, O oh God, that you will help everyone to be vigilant and to be caring and to reach out to those who need saving. We pray, O oh God, also for the immigrant community and ask that you will be with those who have recently entered into our country and ask that you will help them to find, find a new home, to find new communities of support, and especially to, to cling to you in faith and to trust in you in faith. Oramos por los inmigrantes y pedimos a Dios que, que ellos reciban lo que necesitan y también que te, que te confían totalmente en ti para todo. We pray for young couples and ask that you will be with them in their relationships as they explore their lives together and also explore their lives knowing that faith in you is ultimately what helps a marriage and relationships to succeed. Oramos por los matrimonios jóvenes, oh Dios, por las parejas jóvenes, para que ellos puedan uh, darse cuenta que una relación que tiene éxito es una relación cuando tú estás involucrado totalmente en sus vidas. Lord, we lift up all of these all of these petitions and prayers, remembering the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día, danos lo hoy. Y perdónanos nuestras deudas. Así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. The Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It was the 50th year of the rule of Emperor Tiberius. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. Herod was a ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was a ruler of the territory of Aturia. And Trachonitis, Licinius was a ruler of Abilene, and Annas and Cephas were high priests. At that time, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. So John went throughout the whole territory of Jordan River, preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, and God will forgive your sins, as it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the roads ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up, every hill and mountain level off. The winding roads must be made straight, and the rough path made smooth. The whole human race will see God's salvation. The word of God for the people of God. Eh, lectura del Evangelio, Lucas capítulo 3, versículos 1 al 6. En el año 15 del reinado de Tiberio César, Poncho Pilato gobernaba la provincia de Judea. Herodes era Tretarca, tre, tretarca en Galilea, su hermano Felipe en Iturea y Trasunite y Lazanías en Abelín. El sumo, sacerdo el sumo sacerdocio lo, lo ejercían Anás y Caifas. En aquel entonces la palabra de Dios llegó a Juan, hijo de Zacarías, en el desierto. Juan recorría toda la región del Jordán 
predicando el bautismo de arrepentimiento para el perdón de, de pecados. Así está escrito en el libro del profeta Isaías. Voz de, uno que, voz de uno que grita en el desierto. Ay, me perdí. Voz, que uno, voz de uno que grita en el desierto. Preparen el camino del Señor. Háganle sendas derechas. To, todo valle será uh, re, 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 relenado, re, realineado. Toda montaña y colina será alañada. Alañada, los, los caminos torcidos serán, en, se enderezarán, las sendas escabrosas queda, quedarán llenas y todo mortal verá la salvación de Dios. Palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias, Gracias a Dios. Dios. As we begin to meditate on God's word for today, I ask that we will remember the words of the psalmist. The words of the psalmist who say, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on to my path. God, I pray that your word will shed light on the path that you call for all followers of Jesus Christ. Al comenzar tu palabra para nosotros, oh Dios, recordamos las palabras del salmista. Tu palabra es una lámpara para mis pies, una luz en mi camino. Bendito Dios, que tu palabra brilla en, el, en la senda delante de nosotros, para que nosotros podamos andar en tu luz. En el nombre de Cristo oramos. This time of year is a busy one for all of us. Some students are finishing the semester and maybe getting ready to take tests. We have Christmas gifts that we have to fill, give Christmas gift lists. We spend hours driving to stores or to malls or to outlets. And some of us who don't want to go to those places that are crowded, lots of traffic sometimes, We'll spend hours looking for gifts to purchase online. Is there anyone else that we can give Dad besides another tie or tool, someone might think? Is there anything that this person that needs a gift that we can give them that we haven't, that they haven't received before? The person who was most difficult for me to shop for when I was a child was my mother, because she had all the jewelry that she needed. So, I would buy her more jewelry. <laughs> and she would smile and say thank you and wear the next week to church. Who's a person that is difficult for you to shop for, I'm wondering? During this time of year, we have cookies and cakes and desserts to fix. And we have cookies and cakes and dessert to eat. We have families and friends visiting us, or we're visiting them. We have Christmas events to attend. The words hustle and bustle are very appropriate for this time of the year. And how do we get through this season that is so busy? It is with God's grace. Because this is a season of grace. It's a season not for hurrying around, but exactly the opposite. It's a season for stopping and thinking and giving God thanks for God's miraculous presence in the world through the birth of Christ. It's a season to focus on God being in creation, God being in our world, right here, right now, Emmanuel, God with us. Esta época del año nos ocupa mucho. Los estudiantes toman sus exámenes para terminar el semestre. Tenemos listos listas de regalos de Navidad que tenemos que llenar. Así que pasamos horas conduciendo a las, a las tiendas y centros comerciales. Algunos de nosotros pasamos horas, si no queremos conducir a estos lugares, pasamos las horas en el sofá o en la silla, mirando a las cosas que podemos comprar en línea. 
Y durante esta época del año tenemos galletas y pasteles y postres para preparar o para comer. Y tenemos familias y amigos visitándonos, o nos estamos visitando. ¿Cómo superamos todos esta temporada con tantas cosas que hacer? Pues lo hacemos por la gracia de Dios. Y es así como todos deberíamos superar esta temporada, por la gracia de Dios, porque esta es una temporada de gracia. No es una temporada de apresurarnos, en cambio es una temporada de pararnos y dar gracias a Dios por el regalo más importante que es el nacimiento de Jesús en nuestra tierra por Dios con nosotros. And just as we are preparing for Christmas in many different ways, preparation is a normal part of our lives. What are you preparing for right now in your life? If you are a child or a youth, maybe you're preparing to graduate from school or, as I said, preparing to finish the semester or preparing a special uh, school project. Or you may be learning a, a new craft or a new trade. You may be preparing to move to a new place or preparing for a new job. When Elisa got married in October, she and Beth spent many, many hours preparing for their wedding. For Beth, not their wedding, but for Lisa's wedding. And, well, it kind of was too. Uh, for Lisa and Surrender's wedding. In fact, weddings can be so complex that people hire wedding planners to manage the event. What are we doing to prepare ourselves to receive and accept the coming of the Lord during Advent? How are we preparing ourselves spiritually for Christmas? And just as important, in fact, maybe even more important, how is God preparing us to celebrate the birth of Jesus? What is God up to? Así como nosotros estamos preparando para la Navidad de muchas maneras diferentes, la preparación es una parte muy normal de nuestras vidas. La preparación es crucial para las empresas, el gobierno y la educación. Los profesores tienen que preparar sus lecciones para enseñar. Los, los maestros, maestras de la escuela dominical tienen que preparar sus lecciones. Las empresas tienen que pedir sus suministros y sus productos. Los gobiernos tienen que preparar sus presupuestos para mantener nuestro país, nuestra ciudad, funcionando. La preparación continúa a nuestro alrededor todo el tiempo. Y casi siempre nos estamos preparando de alguna manera. Entonces, ¿qué estamos haciendo para prepararnos para recibir y aceptar la venida de nuestro Señor durante el Adviento? ¿Cómo nos estamos preparando nosotros espiritualmente para la Navidad? Preparation is so important that even God prepares. The Old Testament passage from the book of Malachi this morning talks about God preparing the way for Jesus' arrival by sending a messenger. God accomplishes this by allowing Jesus, Elizabeth to give birth to John the Baptist when she was an age beyond childbearing years. And John the Baptist became the messenger of Jesus. He was to make straight the paths in the wilderness, to call people to repentance and announce the coming of the one who was greater than him. And if the people considered that John the Baptist was like Elijah, he told them that the Messiah, the one who was to come, after him were baptized with fire and the Spirit. In the passages that we read today in the Old Testament and in the Gospel, God is preparing the world to receive and accept the coming of the Son. La preparación es tan importante que incluso Dios se prepara. Según el versículo de Malaquías, Dios prepara el camino para Jesús con un fuego de refinador y también con lejía del lavandero. ¿Alguien sabe qué es lejía del lavandero? Yo tampoco, ¿no? Pero yo lo busqué. Sí, ustedes sí saben. Durante el tiempo de Jesús, 
era alguien que limpiaba paños y lana para que estuvieran libres de manchas y marcas y fueran de un blanco brillante. El objetivo de hacerlo es que sea lo más blanco. Y el lavandero usó la lejía especial para limpiar la lana y otras telas. Era tan apestoso que tuvieron que hacer su trabajo en campo lejos del pueblo. Así que la guía del lavandero purifica el textil para que no tenga manchas ni marcas. Y es un proceso duro y apestoso, pero el resultado es un paño bellamente blanco. En la misma línea, el fuego de un fundidor en la guía se refiere a colocar metal en una forja muy caliente para que el fuego queme las impurezas del metal. Esto hace que el metal sea lo más puro posible, especialmente el oro y la plata. Pero para hacer eso, el metal tiene que dejarse en un fuego muy caliente. El pasaje en Malaquías dice que el Señor refinará a los hijos de Leví con un fuego purificador. Y Cristo puede purificar también nuestros corazones, hacernos, hacernos llenos de alegría y libres de los malos pensamientos y tentaciones, para que podamos dar una ofrenda gozosa a Dios. Dios puede refinarnos para que el día de Navidad podamos presentarnos como una ofrenda agradable a Dios. Now, let me suggest an analogy for this time of preparation. When I was 27 years old, I traveled from Dallas to uh, the Rio Grande Valley with a work group from Perkins School of Theology. In May of 1987, I went to renovate a small chapel, a Methodist chapel in Fayesville, a tiny town just north of Edinburgh. There were nine seminarians that volunteered to rebuild this building so that it would be fit for meetings and worship. And the building was in such terrible shape, such terrible condition that it could not be used. The roof leaked, the paint was peeling, the walls were falling down, Now, if you've ever done any painting, and there are some who have in our, in our congregation, or work with roofs or remodeling, you know that it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of planning and preparing. You see, before you can rebuild, you must tear down. I'm going to repeat that. Before you can rebuild, you must tear down. Before you begin splashing new paint on the walls, you have to scrape off the old paint first. Before you can put a new roof on, you have to take off the old rotten shingles. And that's just what we did. At one point, we took off the entire roof so that only the rafters were left standing. And thanks God that it didn't rain on us. While they worked on the roof, others were painstakingly scraping off the old paint on the walls. What were we doing? We were preparing the building to be rebuilt. It would have been idiotic to try to put a new roof over the old roof without taking the old shingles off first. It would have been ridiculous to paint new paint over old paint that was peeling. So to rebuild, what do we have to do? We must tear down first. We must repair the building first. When we completed tearing down the building, it had no roof, it had no paint, in fact, it had no walls, no sheetrock. It was a bare building with only the frames. You might say the building was naked because it had no coverings, no walls, no roof. And after we tore down the building, then we could get at it to put on the new roof. We didn't paint until the building until the final day. And before you rebuild, you must tear down first. Permítanme sugerir una analogía para este mes de preparación. Cuando yo tenía 27 años, yo viajé de Dallas al Valle del Río Grande con un grupo de trabajo de la Escuela de Teología de Perkins. 
en mayo de 1987, fuimos a renovar un edificio de una iglesia metodista unida en un pueblecito que se llama Faisdale, justo al norte de Edimburgo. Nueve seminaristas se ofrecieron como voluntarios para reconstruir el edificio para que fuera apto para reunir las reuniones y los cultos. El edificio estaba en condiciones tan terribles que ya no podían usarlo. El techo cotió, la pintura se estaba despegando y las paredes se estaban cayendo. Y si has hecho cualquier pintura o trabajo por techos o remodelación, sabes que es un proceso complicado y que requiere mucha preparación. Pero antes de poder reconstruir, debes derribar. Antes de que puedas reconstruir, debes derribar. Antes de empezar a salpicar pintura nueva, en las paredes tienes que raspar la, la pintura vieja. Antes de poder poner un nuevo techo, tienes que quitar los guijados viejas podridas. Y eso es lo que hicimos. Y después de algunos días quitamos todo el techo de modo que solo quedaban las vigas de madera. Mientras trabajábamos en el techo, otros estaban quitando minuciosamente la pintura vieja de las paredes. Estábamos preparando este edificio para ser reconstruido. Hubiera sido idiota para tratar de poner un nuevo techo sobre el viejo sin arrancar primero el viejo. Hubiera sido ridículo pintar pintura nueva solo sobre la pintura vieja que peleaba, que pelaba. Para reconstruir, primero debes derribar. Primero debes preparar el edificio. Y cuando terminamos de derribar el edificio, no tenía techo, pintura ni paredes. Se podría decir que este edificio estaba desnudo, porque no, no tenía nada alrededor. Después de derribar el edificio, comenzamos a poner el nuevo techo y pintamos el edificio en el último día. Antes de reconstruir, primero debes derribar. During the Advent time, we enjoy Christmas and Advent songs and hymns. Some radio stations play Christmas music on the radio, and the radio is something that older adults listen to in the car. This is one way of preparing to celebrate Christmas. But we need to do more than just sing the hymns to prepare for Christ's birth. We must ask God to scrape off our weak spots, to scrape off our distractions, to scrape off the grudges we hold towards some person so that we can celebrate Christmas with a clean heart. Preparation is the word for today. God prepared the way for his son to enter the world by sending John the Baptist. And John the Baptist prepared persons to receive Jesus by baptizing them and calling for repentance. Preguntémonos, ¿cuáles son los viejos sentimientos y actitudes desgastados que necesitamos raspar? antes de poder dejar que Dios nos llene de alegría en el día de Navidad. Algunas personas luchan para ser felices durante la Navidad porque la nueva pintura de Navidad no perseverará, pers permanecerá en la vieja pintura de ira o amargura. Debemos pedirle a Dios que raste nuestros puntos de vida raste nuestras distracciones, raste nuestros rencores hacia algunas personas, para que luego podamos celebrar la Navidad con un corazón limpio. Preparación es la palabra para hoy. Dios preparó el camino para que su Hijo entrara en nuestro mundo, enviando al profeta Juan el Bautista. Y Juan el Bautista preparó a las personas para recibir a Jesús bautizándoles y también invitándoles al arrepentimiento. Deja que Dios prepare el camino en tu vida para que el Hijo pueda entrar en tu mundo. Let us ask 
that God prepared the way in our lives so that the Son can enter into our world and our lives. God bless this word. Amen. We will now continue with uh, Holy Communion. Vamos a seguir con la Santa Comunión. You won't be there again. Remember that I got camera. May I use it? Oh, you may join us uh, in our bulletin and also on the uh, in the uh, video screen for the leer junto con nosotros en la uh, pantalla y también en el boletín. Cristo nuestro Señor invita a su mesa a todos los que le aman y buscan crecer a su semejanza. Acerquémonos con fe, hagamos nuestra humilde confesión y preparémonos para recibir este santo sacramento. Oremos. Dios, Dios, Dios misericordioso. Confesamos que no te hemos amado de todo corazón y con frecuencia no hemos sido una iglesia fiel. No hemos cumplido con tu voluntad. Hemos violado tu ley. Nos hemos revelado en contra de tu amor. No hemos amado a nuestro prójimo y no hemos escuchado la voz del necesitado. Perdónanos, buen Dios, te lo rogamos. Libéranos para que te sirvamos con gozo, mediante Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Escuchen las buenas nuevas. Dios muestra su amor para con nosotros, en que siendo aún pecadores, Cristo murió por nosotros. En el nombre de Jesucristo, son perdonados. En el nombre de Jesucristo, eres perdonado. Gloria a Dios. Amén. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. El Señor sea con ustedes. Y también contigo. Eleven sus corazones. Nos elevamos al Señor. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. Es digno y justo darle gracias en la palabra. Es verdaderamente digno y justo darte gracias en todo lugar y en todo tiempo. Dios Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra. Tú nos creaste a tu imagen y semejanza y nos diste vida con tu aliento. Cuando nos apartamos de ti y te olvidamos, tu amor permanece inmutable. Tú nos liberaste del cautiverio e hiciste un pacto para ser nuestro Dios soberano. Y nos hablaste por medios de los profetas. Amén. Y así con todo tu pueblo y con toda la compañía del cielo, alabamos tu nombre y nos unimos en el, en el himno eterno. Santo, santo, santo es el Señor, Dios Todopoderoso. Llenos están los cielos y la tierra de tu gloria. Osana en las alturas. Bendito sea el que viene en el nombre del Señor. Osana en las alturas. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Santo eres tú y bendito es tu Hijo Jesucristo, al que ungiste con tu Espíritu para predicar buenas nuevas a los pobres, sanar a los quebrantados de corazón, proclamar libertad a los cautivos, dar vista a los ciegos y poner en libertad a los oprimidos, para proclamar el año agradable del Señor, sanó a los enfermos, Dio, comer, dio de comer a los hambrientos y comió con los pecadores. By the, baptize, by the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. With the Lord ascended, as he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. El Señor, la noche que fue entregado, tomó pan. Habiendo dado gracias, lo partió y dio y dijo, Tomad, comed, este es mi cuerpo que por vosotros es partido. Haced esto en memoria de mí. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Por eso, recordando la gran misericordia que has mostrado en Jesucristo, te rogamos que aceptes este nuestro sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracias como un sacrificio vivo y santo en unión al sacrificio de Cristo por nosotros para que nuestras vidas proclamen el misterio de la fe. Cristo, Cristo ha muerto. Cristo ha resucitado. Cristo vendrá otra vez. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will take uh, Holy Communion together. Um, you can open. This. We'll take the bread first and then. And then the juice. This is the body of Christ which is given for you and for the world. This is the blood of Jesus Christ which is given for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Gracias, oh Dios, por esta ofrenda de tu Hijo Jesucristo, que sufrió y murió por nosotros para darnos nueva libertad. Lord, we give thanks to you for the offering that Jesus gave through his body and his blood, so that we may have life and freedom in you to serve you and to love others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn, the Himno de Clusura, is O Come on, come Emmanuel, O then Emmanuel. So we'll see it first in Spanish as the note, and then verses 1 and 2 in Spanish, and verses 
Create for the English. Let us rise and sing together. Sunday we started 
with Sakurai and the Lisa. So it's an invitation to all of you to make that young part of the stand to make it a la escuela dominical. Gracias, Tenemos el, el culto de, uh, de oración este miércoles que viene. We have the Wednesday night prayer service. Interestingly enough, we, we had more people who joined us on Facebook Live Wednesday night than were here physically. And that's okay. We still had a good group. So uh, thanks to God that we can reach people that way. Uh, tuvimos uh, bastante personas que, nos, uh, que asistían por Facebook Live. Y gracias por, por aquellos que pueden juntarse con nosotros en esta manera. So we will have that this Wednesday at 7. And uh, then next Sunday, yes, next Sunday, we will have uh, the hanging of the green. So it will be a special service that will include a uh, decoration of the decoration of our sanctuary here with all the, the greenery of, of Christmas. Uh, vamos a colgar las decoraciones de la Navidad eh, en el culto el próximo domingo. Y para hacer esto necesitamos hacer preparación. Ah, el tema, la preparación en este evento es que necesitamos personas para ayudarnos a bajar las cosas que están allá en la unidad. Uh, y vamos a juntarnos a las uh, uh, 9 y 12. Okay from 9 to 12, uh, de, de las 9 hasta mediodía, para hacer la preparación para el culto del de próximo domingo. And you can sign up, I believe, in the back. Is there a sign-up sheet in yeah, the back? Yes, it's on, it's on the bulletin. Sí, and atrás tenemos uh, una hoja donde puede poner su nombre para reservar su lugar en la preparación. Next. And we will have our uh, uh, diaper exchange at, at Owenwood uh, Farm and Nature Service. This time it will be on December the 18th. Uh, usually it's on the last Saturday of the month, but the last Saturday of the month is Christmas. So we're doing it the week before. So I hope that you will join us from 9, 9 to, to noon. And we are still preparing for the cantata. We have our rehearsals at, at 9 a.m. on Sundays and immediately following the Wednesday prayer service. Tenemos el ensayo de cantata. Nos juntamos para ensayar el cantata a las 9 los domingos y también inmediatamente después del culto de oración los miércoles. And we are having a Christmas Eve service uh, in person and online if you want to join us. It will be December the 24th at 6 p.m. Any other announcements? Ah, yes, the group of the Nuevo se reúne. And también este será el 18 de diciembre a la 10 y media. And este grupo está listo. Uh, está abierto a todos que, que necesitan consolación si han perdido uh, a seres queridos o han te, tenido otro tipo de, de trauma. And the last announcement is that we will have our benediction. So let us stand. It will happen now. Let us stand and receive the benediction. Gracias a Dios por tu palabra que siempre es una palabra de vida, siempre es una palabra de, de gozo y de ánimo. Lord, we thank you that your word is a, lot, a living word, and it lives in us, and it lives in your church. So I pray, O oh God, that you will help us to take your word so that we can share it with those among us. Yo oro a Dios para que cada uno de nosotros podamos compartir tu palabra con los que encontramos por toda la semana. En el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. En el nombre del Padre, Son y del Holy Spirit. Amén.